in his Natchez kitchen where we cook up anything that I dream of and I challenge myself with challenging difficult recipes. So you don't have to, you can follow along if you want, even though it's technically not a follow along video. Claire Saffitt's already posted how to make this exact croissant recipe and I'll link it down below. Thank you so much for the inspiration. This is one of those recipes I couldn't get out of my head. So you know I'm going to make it for you guys. I've already made duck a little. I made a whole turkey dinner. Also, if you like cooking videos, makeup, I do whatever I want. Hit subscribe down below. And without further ado, let's get into this croissant recipe. Okay, so we're gonna start off with our dry ingredients, which is all-purpose flour. You definitely want a flour that is 11 to 13% protein. Um, I've seen a range of different uh, flours that were used in different recipes, but if it's all-purpose, I went for the Robin Hood. And this is four and three quarter cup of flour. I'm gonna put that in there. And then kosher salt, the lot goes in la. And now one third of a cup of sugar. This kind of surprised me. It's kind of a sweet dough, but that's what makes it so versatile as well. Cause sugar does bring up the flavor in a lot of things as well. Goes in there. For the whole milk, I couldn't find it anywhere. It was like this elusive European butter. I just, it was sold out in my Italian market but whole milk in Canada is actually homo milk. So you're looking for a fat content of 3.25%. No, no, and three quarter cup of water to half a cup of that homo milk. That protein and fat is also gonna help really give that dough its structure, which is what you need. So before I add in the whole milk, Claire just likes to whip everything together. Make sure it's well combined. I kind of give the bowl a stir, just like this. And she makes a little well, which I'm going to do too. It just keeps everything nice and organized. <laughs> oh, okay. <clears throat> then I forgot, this is a bread recipe. <sighs> How did I forget the yeast? So don't forget the active dry yeast. And in the recipe, she does not bloom it. So this kind of freaks me out because I don't know this. Okay, it says it's good for a year and some months, so. <laughs> I'm gonna follow her procedure and she said right out, you don't need to bloom it in this. So seven grams of that goes in there. That's what's gonna give it its really glutinous structure. So the whole milk and water goes in. And I've refrigerated everything except for the flour. You do want everything to be really, really cold. Now that I think of it, here I go, I'm like self-doubting myself. I'm like, mm, the yeast isn't gonna bloom that much. Okay. I'm not gonna question the process. And clean as you go, as Claire would say, just put it in the sink and wash it later. Oh. Ah. Oh. Okay. All right, so you wanna blend this on, I think, medium low for eight to 10 minutes in your stand mixer. I have these little dough hooks that I'm going to use uh, just to blend it. And so, you want it to go into a dough ball. Come on, take a look. You want it to be sticky, but not hold together. Because none of the gluten have really got a chance to rest yet, which is what we're gonna do after. Let me just do this. Make sure to scrape the sides of the bowl. I don't know what it is about a spatula that's so satisfying. Because I'm one of those that like, I want to get everything into the recipe. And you definitely need to just fold it over. I actually use a spatula to make my bread. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but <laughs> also it was um, triple proofed, so don't do that. Well, the bread turned out really good, but <laughs> you can get a triple rise out of your bread, okay? It's possible. I'm gonna wait till it comes together and I'll be right back. And it just was not coming together with this mixer. So I have to like bring it all together and push it into a dough. Knead it for a couple minutes until you get this shaggy dough. Now, what you're looking for in the dough is something that holds together, but doesn't spring back and it breaks apart just like this. It looks exactly like hers. Now we're gonna cover it with some plastic wrap and let it rest for 10 minutes. I'm gonna set that on the timer there. Now that your dough is rested, we're gonna take off the cling wrap and we're gonna add two and a quarter cup of European style butter. Now I went to the Italian shop, one was sold out 
and it was six dollars for four grams of this stuff okay i found it at save on foods for six dollars for just a regular size block put the, the dimension somewhere around here what, what it was and i got it at save on foods just to give you a little bit of food science you use european style butter because it has a higher fat content because it's been churned longer you want something that's firm when it's cold but doesn't snap and that's what kind of worries me about cutting this butter it kind of crumbled a little bit so i'm gonna roll with it anyway because i'm not paying six dollars for butter right now like for that would be 24 dollars worth of butter and really that's the only expensive part of this recipe i went to three different stores i phoned around and i'm so glad i found it you're gonna cut up the two and a quarter cup of european style butter into quarter inch cubes it looks so perfect in claire's video i couldn't get it like that so i'm gonna use my hand mixer love this hand mixer i can't wait to make some dalgona coffee i mean that was so last year but i still want to try it all right so yeah this works and it's nice and glutinous now which is good okay may not be possible with a mixer like this i really wanted to try it okay this is not working <laughs> keep trying <gasps> all right i think that's what i'm gonna do figure it out so a little bit of butter put it on top i'm gonna fold it in how do you fold in broken cheese she said so herself that it would be very difficult by hand and you know i'm up for the challenge it's already feeling so heavenly right now so a little bit in there <sighs> it's already beginning to look like hers. Okay. This is actually pretty tough dough right now. I don't wonder what that means. Okay. Make a little pocket. Fold it in. Fold in that butter. This is not the way you do it. Fold in more butter. I'm making it up as I go. Oh my gosh. Okay. Claire, if you're watching this, give me some tips. I'm gonna make it happen, okay? Dreams are possible. Just work hard to make them possible. And it looks like you got better things. I'm gonna continue working this. Um, it's at like eight to 10 minutes or so. Go by feeling once everything's incorporated in. And just because everything's cold, it's gonna take a little bit longer as well. So this doubles as the kneading process. I'll get right back to you. I have to, I'm gonna be licking my fingers. Mm, you want some of that? Don't lie to me, you want it. Oh, okay. okay, I'm done. <laughs> All right, so, so after some mixing, it's actually supposed to be a yeasty, you know, very bouncy type of bread dough. But this is looking like a rough mashed potato. And I noticed there's some dry patches in it too. It went totally, totally wrong. Ugh. I'm just gonna add a little bit of flour and until it comes to a yeasty texture. Maybe I took too long and it melted the butter. But looking more for that kind of not sticky in the slightest sort of um, yeasty dough ball. So maybe there was too much butter in, in the recipe. Um, let's just go ahead and add a little flour at a time. And maybe that'll work. Okay. <clears throat> oh, I can find it. Okay, wait <clears throat> what a mess. Messy video. <clears throat> when in doubt, add more flour. <clears throat> Not the least bit sticky. It even says that in the recipe. I just have to rewatch it and I blame it on the proportions and not. That. Actually, that's maybe a little bit. And this is going to rest for an hour anyway, so it's going to hydrate. That's looking a lot better. I guess hear Claire say, no, don't do that. <sighs> Always try it again, right? I'm sure it'll be fine. She said even the worst, you know, croissant recipes turn out really, really good. So, okay. And that was probably about a half a cup that I've added in there. Oh gosh, why did I bake a pie? Oh well. That's how fun. Fun in the in, in the Zanet kitchen. <laughs> That's looking like totes better. <laughs> well, not too much. This is the stickiest dough of your life. <clears throat> oh gosh. Okay, it's coming together. <clears throat> and there's so much butter in here. How would that that little bit of flour not be hydrated by the end of uh, the first rise? Let's just move on and really test that theory that Claire has that, you know, even the worst croissant recipe is going to turn out right. And this may be something that I invent. 
But this is supposed to be a very smooth dough. She said medium low and a low mix. I didn't really do that. Um, and because I incorporated more flour, I did want to let the flour hydrate again before the final rise. And let's just test the texture, what we're looking for, a little bounce. So I see a little rise up, so the, it's not the yeast. Let's try and troubleshoot this and make it better. That fixed it, okay. And now you wanna bring it into a dough ball. So, so I'm just gonna form it into a ball, hope for the best, and we'll move on to the butter block after. So bringing everything under, and then pinching the bottom, rising the dough, covering it, let it go for a couple hours, let the glutens do their thing and fart, and it will double, close to double up in size. I do believe she said it was about 40%. All right. Okay, just one last thing before it does its rise. We want the glutens to form in a kind of a rectangular shape, so we're gonna orient them so they loom into that shape. So we want that rectangle shape because once we add the butter on, it's actually feeling really really good and it's only been sitting for a couple minutes before i remembered oh i forgot the step so you want to cut it like this into an x and hers was kind of deeper than that i think this feels so wrong but but when this rises it will kind of square off and these points will be puffed up and it'll be easier to form in that rectangle shape so we're orienting we're already thinking ahead about how the yeast is going to be formed because it'll be easy to roll out and incorporate the butter in the lamination process, they call it. And we'll get into that a little bit later. The next day, my dough has actually been going for um, 16 hours, something like that. And you're only supposed to let it rise in the fridge for 12 hours maximum. This recipe has a thousand different factors to take in account. And I'm struggling just to get it out of the bowl right now. But I have a feeling, is this going to turn out? But is this not going to be exceptional? But I have high hopes. And as long as you have patience, hard work and dedication, you can do it too. And I love being, uh, again, challenging myself. But what is this? A, a Dairy Queen blizzard or something? Like, okay. Every time I see people use this recipe, they use like a rolling pin without like the, the little handles. But we're just going to smooth this out into that rectangle shape. And you're actually not supposed to use pressure, but I'm just gonna let it sit at room temperature for 10 minutes. See if that does anything. Move on to our butter block. So I do believe this is this much butter. <laughs> Sorry. And we want an eight by eight square. So we roughly kind of put it in that square shape. I'm gonna get a ruler and make sure it's exact. This is really gonna help you in the long run. I'm not trying to bug you, as Claire would say, even though I'm not organized in the slightest, but even I find satisfaction in that. And we just wanna even it out. These are separate. I didn't have the individual sticks. Again, that was $6 worth. That would have been $24 worth of butter. And I'm just a little steep for me right now. So I did go for the Dairyland uh, European style butter. Anyway, so we're just going to uh, combine it all together into one block. And you just want to get it workable uh, without warming it up. So this is what this initial process is going to entail. It's also going to, this is all the different pieces, so it's going to fuse all the pieces together into one block, in theory. I can tell this is really, really good butter, but it's just not fusing together. At this point, you know it's softening up and it's really starting to go really, really even. I don't think Claire's butter shattered like this. That's not a good sign. Now that it's all one even layer, I'm just going to... Gently go back and forth, fuse all the layers. Okay. I'm already a new parchment. This is where everything gets really precise. Got my, I don't have a fancy ruler like hers, I forgot. I'm just going to use materials that I bought in store. So eight, that's actually perfect, but it's not even in the slightest. And then I'm going to get a new parchment. Still not 
all all in one, but really uneven actually. <laughs> I want to like overlap her video to mine. Mine's like the Wish version. So this is where it gets really, really precise. So this is going to be the line that we measure right there. And you want it to be a bit smaller. So I'll start back here. So this will be where the butter is going to be pushed into. And now I'm going to measure exactly eight right there. So I'm going to make that fold right there, right there, eight. And I put my finger right here, so therefore you can just fold it over the a perfect eight inch square. Starting off from this side, eight inches. There, I'm gonna put my finger there. Give that, mm. yeah. Eight right there, and fold. Yada yada yada, not that type of yada. Eh. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. I don't remember. Okay. Yeah. There we go. All right. There we go. At this point, you could probably oh, just roll it. It's really really pliable really really fast and it's still yeah. so I waited until it got to room temperature I piled it back on there I noticed once I started rolling out of the corners the corners kind of got pushed uh, a little bit further. So it was like an eight by nine at some point. And I was like, oh my gosh. And the, the layers were still not fused together. So now that it's room temperature, it's a lot easier to work with. So I just piled it in the middle, made it all into one block. It is still kind of cool to the touch, which is good. Okay, part of the problem is, yes, this kind of bowing right here. So I don't know if I didn't have enough tension. I did exactly what she did in her video, but you know what? Um, as long as your dough is two times the length and the same thickness, we should be okay. I just really wanted an eight by eight square. You know what I mean? But let's just keep going. Oh, uh, Claire, what am I doing? I folded it. I made sure the creases. Okay. I'm just going to focus on an even layer first. Maybe I am pressing too hard. No. Even with no pressure, it still de deforms. Okay, when Josh did his croissants, his butter was rounded like this. So I don't think it's going to be that much of an issue. Let's just keep, let's just continue. Oh. So after some deliberation, I've come to the conclusion like not only was my fridge way, way, way too cold, um, like almost to a freezing point, I have noticed some frost in the fridge before, and it just occurred to me it's slowing down the gluten a little bit too much. So I put it at the recommended set, waited till it's at room temperature or close to room temperature, and formed it into that dough ball again, and wrapped it up, um, let it do another rise for a couple hours. I haven't really noticed it's doubled in size. I do notice once it gets to, got to room temperature, it got that pliable state again, but yet it looked grainy on top. So 
I don't know, I'm gonna make something else with it and show you guys at the end of the video. So do not add flour to croissant dough. It just made it way too rigid. Maybe there's too much protein now due butter ratio. You could always add more butter into your dough, uh, into the dough to balance out the ratios. And I'm pretty sure that's what went wrong there. And in terms of the butter, it should not snap. It should be nice and pliable when it's cold. Taking it right out of the fridge, I can crumble this butter. So I did compare protein uh, for Dairyland, regular Dairyland butter, excuse me, and Dairyland European style butter. Same protein. So it does taste a lot better though. Like, like I'll give it that. So I'm unsure why the fat content is the same as uh canadian as just their regular butter like we really don't understand this so i am going to have to spend the 24 dollars, get the butter and redo this whole thing claire if you're watching this you're probably cringing and i kind of want to see that video of you reacting to me because it would be so funny because like why are you adding flour i could just see you kind of freaking out so, I will throw it out at the end um, if I baked anything with this uh, leftover dough because it is salvageable. I don't know, like uh, maybe even the yeast was really bad. Uh, I'm trying to sh troubleshoot it the best way possible because it actually never rose uh, in at all. And I was thinking it would, you know, rise in the fridge instead of, you know, on the countertop. And um, also it was partly not blended enough. Um... I do remember that weird consistency. There was like weird little gr grains and strands in with the dough as well. So I don't know. We're definitely going to try it again. This is my first attempt and everyone's being so supportive. Um, I am going to try a different recipe. I'll try, uh, what's his name? He's, he'll, he's right up above me here. I'm going to try his recipe for the homemade dough. Um, because yeah, that whole mixing cold butter into dough, not very easy to do by hand and I was not doing it properly. So yeah, or maybe I just didn't have patience too. That's part of it too. <laughs> Cause I was expecting the mixer to work for some reason in my head. I'm like, oh yeah, it'll work. Whatever. I have a new mixer, which is pretty good for whipped, you know, whipped desserts and that sort of thing, but not a croissant dough. <sighs> Live and learn. Uh, we're definitely going to try it again. And, um. You'll see the retake once it's out. Um, in the meantime, watch some other videos on my channel. I made a seven course a Christmas dinner. I made a duck a la lunch, um, which is very fitting. I love my French cooking. I love croissants. So that's what we're gonna do next. And um, yeah, hit subscribe down below, hit that like button, button hit, hit that bell icon so you'll be notified every time that I post a video. I'm um, pretty sure I already said that, but whatever. I love you all so much. Au revoir, my beautiful bubbles.